Hello, my name is Zach Gibbs and I'm a content developer within education services inside Juniper Networks. And today we will be going through the data center filter based forwarding verification learning by. All right, so here is our topology and in this topology we have a few different devices. We have router L1 and router L2 which act as router leafs and then we have service leaf L1 which is our service leaf and DCFW, which is the data center firewall. And so one thing to keep in mind here is that there are other learning bytes that I've done that cover the configuration of those devices. And so if you're interested in that, the configuration of filter-based forwarding in a data center, go ahead and check those out. But with this learning byte, we're gonna focus on the verification, making sure this actually works. Because remember, we are sending traffic from host one to host two. However, we want that traffic to be inspected. And we're going to be permitting SSH traffic and blocking and logging ICMP traffic. So with that being said, let's get this going. Okay, so here is the topology. So what have we done so far? We've configured the inspect VRF on router L1, which is a normal router leaf, and then inspect VRF on service L1, which is the service leaf, the secure VRF on service L1, and the secure VRF on router L2, and then we did some security policy configuration and looked at the DC firewall uh, to show how things are working there. We looked at the BGP, things like that, or the BGP sessions to make sure they're up and functioning, which they are, make sure we're getting routes and advertising the routes we want to do. So things look pretty good there. So let's go ahead and jump back to host one and see what happens when we attempt to communicate with host two. And before we do that though, I would like to clear the syslog file just to make sure we don't have anything extra in there. Okay, so let's go ahead and attempt to ping host one from host two. And this should not work. Recall, we are blocking this traffic. And so that's great. Now let's open an SSH session. And good, we get prompted for the password. And good, we're, we are in host two. And we are currently logged into host one, or at least the initial session is host one. But we're able to open a, SSH session from host one to host two. So that's perfect. So let's go ahead and leave that open for now. And then let's jump back to router L1 to verify what we're seeing. So here is the router leaf, router L1. And so recall, we set up that firewall filter with a counter. And we can see here the counter. Okay, great. That looks good. So we have traffic. Now let's create a little more traffic. Let's jump back to host one and create a little more traffic here. Let's look at stuff. Do a few returns, that'll create some traffic just to make sure that is incremented because we want that to be incremented. And great, we went from 37 to 56. So we definitely have traffic hitting that firewall filter. That is perfect. That's exactly what we want to see. And so let's go ahead and jump to router L2. So here is router L2. Let's do the same thing. Look at the firewall and we see this is host two to host one. And so this is the return traffic. We can see we have 40 packets here. It's not gonna be symmetrical because SSH isn't symmetrical. It's not like we're doing ping traffic here. So let's jump back to host one, create a little more traffic. Okay, so created some traffic. Let's look at router L2. And recall, this is the device connected to, the leaf connected to host two. And great, it is incrementing. The return traffic is hitting that firewall filter, getting sent to the VRF. Perfect. So let's look at, let's jump back to router L1. And let's look at the, the route for host two, see what we have here. VRF one has a, a direct route to it. That's perfect. That's, that's how that should be. That's just standard ERB. And then, uh, and because that's, cause it's set up with that IRB 20, that's in that same subnet. And then in the inspect VRF, we have a default route and that is learned through eVPN. That is perfect. And those two interfaces point to uh, the spine devices. I haven't really talked about the spine devices too much, but that is where those two interfaces are pointing. So that's exactly what we should be seeing there. And that is that type five eVPN route. And notice how it is in the inspect vrf.inet.0 table. We could say show route inspect. So anything, any route table for the inspect vrf, or rather I need to say route table. And we'll see couple of different tables. We'll see the inspect VRF i0 and we'll see the inspect VRF.evpn.0. So you think to yourself, well, shouldn't that be there? Shouldn't we have something in the evpn route table? And no, we don't. 
We don't have anything for host two in there. We do have some stuff in there, like some fictitious routes. And, uh, and, but the route we're looking for is that default route in the inspectvrf.inet.0 table. That's that type five eBVN route. So that's exactly what we should see. All right, so let's jump back to router L2. Remember, this is a router leaf. And let's do the same thing, but let's look for the 10.1.1.1, which is host one. And we get the same thing. We get that default route. Recall this default route is coming from the firewall getting sent to the respective VRFs on the service leaf. And then there, the service leaf is putting that into eVPN as a type five route. So that's why that's showing up there. And that's how, like if we jump back to the router L1 and let's look at that again. That is how we get to host two. So it goes into the inspect, it goes, the traffic goes into VRF1 to start. And then in the inspect VRF says, what do I do with this traffic? It does a route lookup and it's like, oh, I've got a default route. I'll send it that way. So it sends it to the service leaf that way. And then on router L2, the return traffic, what happens there is, you know, the, the initiating traffic hits host two, then host two sends it back, sends the, starts the return traffic and sends it to VRF1 on router L2, that leaf. And then it gets filter base forwarded to the secure VRF and the secure VRF says, what do I do? And it looks in its secure VRF.inet.0 table, sees this default route and says, okay, I'll use this route. And it sends it to the secure VRF on the service leaf. It's really cool how that works. And so with that being said, let's go ahead and jump to the service leaf. So this is service L1, which is our service leaf. And let's look for the routes there and see what we have. So host one is 10.1.1.1. And we can see here that perfect we have in the inspect VRF that route. And then what happens from there is that gets exported to the firewall. So if we look at, uh, and notice it matches in the secure VRF, the default route, but that's not what we're really focusing on. So we're just focusing on this because it's, it's coming in. It, well, the return traffic will be sent to this, the inspect VRF. And so that's why that's there and in the inspect VRF. So then it's able to draw it back, draw it back to the uh, router L1 leaf that has the inspect VRF as well. So you can see here that we do have this. And so a little helpful, maybe a little less confusing, but I just do the exact command. And we can see here that it is in the inspect VRF.inet.0 on the service leaf. And that's perfect because it is coming from the inspect VRF. Recall it's a static route on the inspect VRF on router L1, and then we're sending it through eVPN to the service leaf L1 in the uh, uh, inspect VRF. So that's why we're seeing that there. So let's look at 10.1.1 or 2.1, and that's going to be the host two route. And we see that in the secure VRF, and that's perfect because that'll allow host one as it makes it through the fabric and hits the secure VRF on service leaf L1, that'll allow it to get to host two. So let's look at those default routes. So that we're getting, actually, before we do that, let's do a, sh let's look at the BGP sessions. And we can see how we're receiving routes from the different devices, but this is a little confusing. I mainly want to focus on these two top ones here. That is the firewall BGP sessions. And so with that, let's go ahead and show route receive protocol BGP 10.91.91.1. And you can see here we're receiving a default route. And it's going to be the same one for 92.92.1. And so let's look at show route advertising BGP 10.91.91.1. Now the 91 is part of the inspect VRF. And so we can see that we're advertising that host route, that 10.1.1.1 for host one and 10.92.92.1. We can see that we're advertising the host two uh, route towards the firewall. And so let's also then look at the show route. Recall that we're getting a default route and we can see that we're getting a default route in both the inspect VRF and the secure VRF. And we're learning that through BGP. So that's perfect. That's what we want to see. Okay. So with that, one last thing we want to do is let's check the, let's check the out the firewall, see what we have for the sessions. So, so security flow session, uh, let's go protocol, TCP destination port 0.2 for SSH. And we can see we have that SSH session. We can see it's coming from 10.1.1.1 going to 10.1.2.1. 
we can see that we have packets inter incrementing for that flow. So that first flow that's coming in, we can see we have packets going through. That's perfect. And then the return flow, which is the second line, we can see that two or 10.1.2.1, that's host two, is responding to host one on 10.1.1.1. And we can see the interfaces, giggy 00 or giggy 002.91 for the incoming, the initiating, and giggy 002.92 for the return traffic. And we can see that packets are incrementing on both of those flows. So that's perfect. That's what we want to see. And recall, we are blocking the, uh, the ICP, ICMP traffic that we sent. So let's look at that. And you can see here, yes, we had some, uh, some traffic blocked. And uh, we can see it was denied 10.1.1 uh, to 10.1.2.1. It's ICMP blocked by the block ICMP inspect to secure zones. And you can see here, okay, we're actually blocking that traffic. And so this traffic is being analyzed and only certain traffic is being let through. And the cool part about this is you can do a lot more than just layer two or, la or excuse me, layer three or layer four. We could do some advanced layer seven, IDP, ATP cloud, uh, SSL proxy, stuff like that on this traffic. So there's a lot you can do here. So filter-based forwarding is working. We're filter-based forwarding traffic from host one to host two through the data center firewall. And so this is working exactly as we want it to. So that does bring us to the end of this learning bite, and we demonstrated how to configure and verify data center filter-based forwarding. So as always, thanks for watching. Visit the Juniper Education Services website to learn more about courses. View our full range of classroom, online, and e-learning courses. Learning paths, industry segment and technology specific training paths. Juniper Networks Certification Program, the ultimate demonstration of your competence. And the training community, from forums to social media, join the discussion.